Hello, my name is Rosemary Bombi. I am a Mirungajarang person and I speak Mirung. Where I work at the language center, with, well, well, our lady what we work with, her name is Dorian. Like me, her and my sister, we, and my cousin, we go out and teach language at the high school and the primary school and all our daycare centers. It's to year two, like I don't know what eight there, maybe seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. But for them year two more, we was teaching them when they was little toddlers and now they you know, understand. And like, well, ever since we've been teaching those kids, they went back home and telling, you know, learning their parents and now their parents and even the principal at the schools, they're getting interesting in coming there. And, for public class here at the language center. And, uh, when I was working there since 2013, it wasn't real, like it wasn't going nowhere because they had girls there, but it took um, took them six months say, to for them to learn language, but they couldn't speak it properly because maybe their tongue was too. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but when I joined them, because I was a language worker, see, in the other building, but when I joined those, the language nest mob, that's when Stephanie, Stephanie Ward was a, she was our boss, I think. Yeah, before she left. <coughs> I mean, when I, when I joined her, it was like going nowhere, the language like through the school snap, but when I joined it, it was like, <coughs> we was, um, well, just say it lift, it started to climb up slowly, like what they say, from little things, big things grow, you know? Well, it was like that, no, yeah. Yeah, like they go back and tell their parents, oh, we've been learning Mirong language. Well, they t well the, those kids too, they themselves, they tell us, oh, we have to like learn the Mirung language because when we are on Mirung land, see, they tell us like that. They have respect for us, and uh, our law and our mainly our language. Now they have respect for you. Well, it was my mom, yeah, but she passed away, yeah. and she told me, "Oh, if you, you need to go and learn, you know, kid, teach kid language." I'm learning myself too. Well. Before she passed away, she told me that I have to learn language because my mom and dad was frequent speakers, you know. They didn't know English much, yeah. And like now, I have, to, seems I was working there with children, uh, like my sisters, they got a lot of grandchildren, <clears throat> and they, small ones, and like, you know, from the age of 16 to one, grandchildren, all my sisters' grandchildren, and like, I wanna teach them too, language. And even the other kids again at school, yeah. Like my mom told me, you have to think this is important. That's part of your culture. You know? yeah. Now my grandmother passed on long, long before. Yeah. I worked at the language center. I was just on your school girl, and when she passed away, yeah. yeah. But I didn't catch up. Well, my grandfather is from another tribe, see, from the Northern Territory side. Yeah. But my grandmother's a Murung lady, yeah. My mom and dad are, <clears throat> well, I'm half, I'm to say, like, well, up there, you got two, they call um, Murung Gajarang, you know, like, um, me and her, we're half of that, and I say, like, Murung and Gajarang. But we don't speak Gajarang, we only just listen it, but Murung, we do speak it more, yeah. yeah. But I never catch up with my, my real grandfather, because he passed on before <coughs> I was born, so yeah. I just want to catch up with my, uh, the other grandfathers, but they, they're from another tribe called Wagiman tribe from Northern Territory. Yeah. I wish I see it strong, <laughs> going strong, you know, because I wish the younger generation will catch, up, catch on and keep, it, keep on talking to make it, you know, alive for us, our language, you know. Yeah. Because I think so that is our aim, uh, to keep our language alive.